Welcome to Living Hope. In today's message, Righteous Persecution, Dr. McLuhan teaches about the blessing Jesus offers to all who are persecuted for following him. More people have suffered religious persecution today than at any other time in history. For more than 20 years, I have ministered to people who face persecution for their faith. My work with the International Religious Freedom Roundtable in Washington has made me very aware of how many people face religious persecution every single day. It would be safe to say that people who choose to follow a faith, not the majority faith of the country where they live, will face persecution. And this includes Muslim countries where people who follow different divisions of Islam that are not supported by the majority people suffer as well. Many are suffering in Pakistan. For example, the tensions between Shia and Sunni Muslims runs very deep. There is, however, no question that followers of Jesus are the most persecuted people in all of the world. Here is a difficult reality to grasp. Every five minutes, someone is martyred for their faith right now. Before I conclude bringing this message to you, at least four people will have been martyred for their faith. Jesus said, remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. John chapter 15 and verse 20. Last Sunday, I returned home with stories of people in the Middle East and North Africa who suffer daily, regularly for their faith in Jesus. I learned about two men who are appealing their apostasy sentences right now, their death sentences. Uh, today, we come to the last of the blessings that Jesus offered to his followers Jesus ended with one of the most important blessings that he knew that his followers would need to hear and have and walk in. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 10. Whenever bad things happen to us, the most human reaction is to ask, God, what did I do? that this is happening to me. <laughs> and that is exactly the reaction that Satan wants us to have. My dear friend, Pastor M, was jailed in one of Iran's worst prisons. The devil tricked him into believing that God had abandoned him in prison. The moment I heard his story, I knew that he had been deceived. And I believed there was a better ending to the story I just heard that God was waiting to reveal to my dear friend. And when the right moment came, our relationship was strong enough. I asked him if I could pray with him about what happened in his mind while he was in prison. And as we prayed, God took him back to the cell. And when he looked around, he saw Jesus sitting on the bed right next to him. Jesus promised he would never leave us, that he would never forsake us, no matter what we face. Jesus is sitting next to you where you work, in the midst of those people that are doing terrible things to you. The moment God opened his eyes, he received the blessing that we are studying today. Let's read it again, and this time from the Passion Translation. How enriched you are when you bear the wounds of being persecuted for doing what is right, for that is when you experience the realm of the heavenly kingdom. What a wonderful thing. Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 from the Passion Translation. As I prayed with Pastor M, his cell was flooded with the presence of the kingdom of heaven. His heart was healed. And he discovered that Jesus was with him through it, all the suffering that he experienced. Now Jesus went on to say, blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. 
Matthew chapter 5, verse 11. Who's been falsely accused? Man, that's one of the worst kinds of things that can happen to us other than physical violence. Jesus warned that his followers would receive verbal abuse and physical abuse. In the face of verbal abuse, the Apostle Paul wrote these words, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Romans chapter 12 and verse 14. No doubt Paul was talking out of his own experience. You remember then there was a time when he cursed people who were following Jesus and tried to jail them and say all sorts of things about them. And after Paul, through that vision, discovered the true identity of Jesus, who are you, Lord? He learned to bless people who cursed him. Just recently, someone cursed me out on my Facebook page. It was just a string. I ended a message with three very vulgar words, and I just simply wrote back, bless, bless, bless. And the person at that moment stopped writing to me. We can learn to bless people who curse us. And Jesus promised that there is a reward for blessing, and his presence was with us when we are cursed and when we are in difficult circumstances. He will be with us, and he will help us. One time I was visiting China, and I was invited to have a meal with one of the early church fathers, a very respected man. I was just so humbled to be in his presence as we heard in the reading of communion. I felt like I should be washing his feet. This dear brother had spent many years in prison. He experienced more than physical abuse. He was tortured for his faith. Every day, guards would pull on the chains that were tied to the handcuffs around his arms, and they kept pulling on them, saying, recant your faith. Renounce your faith in Jesus. And his wrists were cut to the bone he had been pulled on so many times. And he reached a point where he hoped that his life would end. And he'd suffered just so much. And at that low moment, Jesus appeared to him with these powerful words. My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 in verse 9, he recognized that these were the same words that Jesus said to Paul when at a mo low moment in his life. And this dear church father eventually was released, still serving the Lord at the time that I was privileged to have a meal with him. He was about to rent a swimming pool and baptize 300 people. <laughs> what an exciting experience to see the power of the Lord helping him overcome. I've met with men and women who have suffered terribly at the hands of cruel prison guards, stories I wouldn't repeat in a public forum like this. Many need counseling, just as I needed counseling after one of the times that I was arrested. I can tell you that those who suffer the most, come to discover that whether they realized it or not at the time, sometimes it takes time to figure out that Jesus was actually with you. And though you felt abandoned, you never were. And his presence is with us when we go through difficult times. At another time, Jesus said these words, from now on, in one house, there will be five divided, three against two, and two against three, Luke chapter 12, verse 52. And he continued on as specifically as he possibly could. They will be divided, father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Could Jesus have been any clearer about what to anticipate. He could have gone on with uncles and nephews and aunts and nieces and so on. Luke chapter 12 and verse 53. And I have met many followers of Jesus, especially those who have a media ministry who can no longer return to the home and the land of their birth. If their families are willing to visit with them, they must meet in a nearby country if their relatives are not able to travel to America. I want to share with you this morning the story of Brother Nasser 
from Saudi Arabia. Nasser was born into a Salafi Sunni Muslim family. They are the radicals. They are the purists in their own mind. He dream, his dream was to fight in a holy war and die as a martyr so that he could go directly to paradise as he had been taught. Now, near the end of his high school years, his family came to America for a holiday. But before they could return home, a war broke out in the Gulf, and it prevented them from traveling. And by the time the war was over, Nasser was about to end his high school and enter into college. It was decided that the best universities are in America, and he should stay in America and attend university as his family returned home. In talking with his family, they agreed that he should become a dawah, that is a Muslim missionary to unbelieving Americans so that we could follow the true religion of Islam. Many come to America as missionaries to Islam. And NASA had some success converting disgruntled students with their experience in church and life and whatever philosophies their professors had taught them. Now, after graduating, Nasser fell in love with an American girl. She was a follower of Jesus, but was not walking closely or in obedience to the Lord. Nasser decided not to say much about Islam until after they were married. This is another very common practice. After their marriage, arguments began to increase, reached a point where they had a stalemate, but then... She became pregnant, and after the birth of their daughter, Nasser made it clear that the children would be raised as Muslims. His wife realized her mistake and mobilized many people to pray for him. And over the next several years, the prayers of literally 10,000 or more people whom she had mobilized prayed for him, and God began to soften his heart. Nasser began to have thoughts that only God could have put in his mind. Nasser later discovered that the thoughts that God gave him were actually verses that he would one day discover are in the Bible. Nasser began to want a relationship with God that Islam said he could never have. He began to believe that none of his good works would give him any status before God. Many people across all religions believe that good works give us status before God. And if we have done enough good, perhaps we will go up. If by chance God would be lenient and have not understood that God requires more than good works, he requires the forgiveness of all of our sins. Now, he came to accept that he was just going to burn in hell. He wouldn't be a martyr, and there was nothing that he could do about it. Now, Nasser did not let anyone know about these thoughts that God was dropping into his head. And so from an outward appearance, it looked like his heart was getting harder and harder. But internally, God was softening him and drawing him closer to himself. I believe someone like Nasser is watching me. Outwardly, you look very hard and firm, but inwardly, God has been talking to you He's talking to you right now. God's been talking to you and putting thoughts in your mind about the way to the right path to follow him and become in a relationship with Jesus. This is a sign to you that God is revealing himself to you. Nasser reached the point where he came to believe that he did not even deserve to think about going to paradise. He began to feel hopeless and helpless. He said, well, since I don't have any hope, if I'm invited to church, I'll just go because I'm hopeless anyway. And without realizing all of this was going on, his dear brave wife invited him to attend her church. And to her surprise, he said yes. Now, there were many things about church services that were strange, foreign, seemed weird to him and totally inappropriate, even for consider how we might hug uh, between uh, 
people we love in church. Why in the world is that happening in church? Why are you drinking coffee and donuts in church? <laughs> just like, just like completely. That's just that's just what kind of disrespect is that? <laughs> Yet he kept wanting to return. And something in the atmosphere of the church was drawing him to keep coming. And many people who come into a church for the first time feel something that they've never felt in the temples of the religions of the world. He found himself wishing that the message of Jesus was actually true. And one Sunday while he was sitting in the back, that's a good place to be run down by God, he had an open vision of the crucifixion of Jesus. He found himself standing on a rocky hill watching soldiers nail Jesus to a cross. And then he saw the cross lifted up and and jarred. And immediately, as Jesus came still in that, that terrifying, painful moment, he made direct eye contact with Nasser. And although there was blood all over his face, Nasser saw deep love in the eyes of Jesus. Nasa felt love coming to him, even though Jesus was in terrible pain. And at that moment, Nasser understood that Jesus was more than a prophet. Nasser understood that Jesus was the one who knew him inside and out. He felt completely exposed and yet completely loved. He was the only person who could love Nasser that way. Jesus was the only person who can love you that way. He understood that what Jesus did on the cross was for him to pay for his sin. And a light went on in his head. And for the first time, he understood why Jesus needed to die on a cross to pay for not only his sins, but for the sins of the whole world. Now, no word passed between Jesus and Nasser. It was all visual, but the picture was enough for Nasser to clearly understand the message. And as I've shared with you before, I had a very similar vision. Blood all over Jesus' face. He looked up and made direct eye contact with me. I saw him on the cross. No words passed between us. But I understood that my shame was taken away. Nasser understood that Jesus paid the penalty for his sins. Jesus made it possible for Nasser to have a right relationship with God. The moment the vision ended and Nasser realized he was still in the church and opened his eyes and people were all around him, the very next words out of the preacher's mouth were, If there's anyone who needs to receive Jesus as your Savior, pray these words with me. And so he prayed this simple prayer. Jesus, thank you for coming to earth to die for me and pay for my sins to be forgiven. With tears streaming down his face, Nasser asked Jesus to forgive him and make him his child. The moment he did that, Nasser felt the love of God come upon him like a warm blanket and just wrap and surround him with love. It was not that God was near him, next to him, but in him. And peace came upon him. And the burden of trying to be good enough was washed out of his life. It was lifted off of him. The peace of God flooded upon him. He felt the love of God inside of him. His heart began to explode with the feeling that this is what I have been longing for all of my life. NASA waited a week to tell his wife what had happened. Being the scientist that he was, computer scientist from the school in a Bible Belt University, he wanted to be sure that the weight was still gone. He wanted to be sure that the peace was still present. (laughs) It was. And it never left him. 
and he shared with his wife, who began excitedly telling everyone she knew. Now, she did not realize that this could have some very serious consequences for Nasser, Nasser who was weighing whether or not to say any of this to his family. He knew that he needed to speak to his family before the news got to his family. Shared with his youngest sister, she had also been touched by the Spirit of God through various experiences she had. She easily and readily followed Jesus. His older brother easily and ready followed Jesus. His younger brother, his next uh, youngest brother, absolutely rejected, and his father completely rejected his son. I have no son. You are dead to me. But slowly, slowly, as my friends in the Gulf would say, shweya, shweya, prayers of people that won NASA began to soften his father's heart. He has not received Jesus yet, but the relationship is improving. Nasser experienced in his rejection the blessing that Jesus talked about in our beatitude today. The promise to be with us, the promise to have the assurance of eternal life, the promise to inherit the kingdom of God. And what he longed for all of his life, to be sure he could go to paradise, now there was no longer any guess, because Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Nasser does not regret his decision to follow Jesus. And he invites you today to follow Jesus. Someone who has been listening to this message has had the same vision that Nasser had that I had of Jesus. And now it is your privilege to receive Jesus. It is your privilege to ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins. I invite you, like the preacher invited Nasser, to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Say with me, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me in my place on the cross. I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for the sins I've committed. And come into my life just like you came into Nasser's life. You just felt the presence of Jesus come upon you. Write to me and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. Next week, we'll continue studying the powerful word of God. Father, thank you that you've promised to never leave us or forsake us. We pray for those around the world who are suffering for their faith. Help them to stay strong and to know your grace. Help us to not take for granted the opportunities we have to stay faithful to you. Amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.